Maybe you're in this position too. I know I have been in the past. How can I stop trying to make everybody happy? There's three simple, effective strategies that I can share with you today and the last one is probably the most important. Before we get to those three strategies, how's it going? Can I just ask you that? How's it going with keeping everybody happy? I was asking Janet this the other day in my office. She is going through some serious mental health issues right now, including anxiety, depression, self-hatred, self-loathing. And why? I mean, she's an awesome person. She's got three little kids at home. Her husband has a busy job that takes him out of the home most of the day. You probably know the scenario. And Janet in tears is describing to me that she is a failure. Everything that I can look at tells me, your life rocks, you're, you're killing it. She doesn't feel it, why? Because she's trying to please everyone and it is driving her crazy. Can you relate to what Janet's feeling? And it's not just her husband and her kids. There's all the people in her neighborhood who she is sure are looking at her and judging her and seeing if her house is clean enough and seeing if she handles her kids the right way. We make up these things in our imagination sometimes that just have us feeling awful, terrible, horrible. And as I'm having this conversation with Janet, I'm thinking, how long can this go on? And how long do we want to persist in something that isn't working? See, she thought that what wasn't working is that she wasn't doing a good enough job. What she didn't realize is that she's taking on an impossible task. You can't make everybody happy. In fact, you know what? I'm not even saying that you shouldn't. I'm saying you can't. It's not possible. And you know this from your own experience because can anybody make you happy? Now, sure, people can do things that please you or that you enjoy but your emotional life is your responsibility. And that is the same for all these people that you're trying to keep happy. So this first simple strategy is simply to ask yourself, is this working for me? If it's not, I got two more strategies for you, okay? So hang tight, but we have to answer that question first. Is this working for me? You know, one of the definitions of insanity is that we keep doing the same things expecting a different outcome. And if this is not working, let's abandon that track and get onto something that's gonna be a little more productive and useful. Here's our second strategy, and it has to do with a psychological tool that I teach all of my clients. I teach it in my trainings and in my keynotes. It's called metacognition. A more common term that you're going to hear thrown around out there is mindfulness. We achieve it sometimes through meditation, contemplation, um, mindfulness practices. So you've heard about this, right? Here's the psychological side of it. Metacognition. That's psychobabble, I know. You maybe haven't even heard that term, which is okay. It's a made up term. We make up terms in psychology. It makes us feel smart. And this is one of them. Metacognition, if you break that down, the word cognition means thinking simply thinking. Metacognition is a higher level. It's thinking about thinking. And notice for a moment that you can do this. You can think about your own thinking. Now be careful with it because it's gonna drive you nuts. And sometimes the kind of thinking we do causes us to have more misery. Mindfulness, metacognition, is one of the first strategies that I have to teach my clients because it creates a space. And in that space is where choice exists. And until you see it as a choice, it's not. So we have to rise above our common level of thinking into a state of metacognition, thinking about our thinking, and now we can choose. We can choose what direction our thoughts are going. Quick example for you. I got a call from an association. I've done work with this association before. I've keynoted at their conference. They wanted to have me do a virtual event with them to help them know how to stay positive 
during such challenging times. All right, now, most of us would agree that the pandemic and everything associated with it has created some challenging times, right? There's some difficult things that we're all dealing with. What I wanted them to do is first go to that level of metacognition. And I started it with the phone call with the organizer for the conference. I said, challenging times. What do you mean? See, I invited her to step from cognition to metacognition, to think about her thinking. When I said, what do you mean? What do you mean by challenging times? And her response was, oh, the, the pandemic, of course, and we, we have to do remote working, and we haven't been able to hold our actual events. We're doing everything virtually. And she, she went through a number of examples about that. And I said, oh, oh, okay, that's what you mean. Well, that little piece of metacognition got her thinking about her use of the word challenging times. Huh, I guess I was calling it challenging. I had the, the privilege and opportunity of hearing Immaculate Ilibagiza speak. She survived the Rwanda Holocaust as a young woman living in Rwanda. She experienced the slaughter of her people. Now, when I bring that to, the, to your attention, what if you were to compare that to a pandemic? Which one seems worse to you, <laughs> right? Challenging times, really, compared to what? And when we go to metacognition, we can start to see what our mind is doing. This is going to be so important as you work on not trying to please everyone. You can think about your own thinking and that puts you into a position of choice until you see it as a choice, it's not. That's why it's such an important step. Hey, before I share that third strategy with you, jump down to the comments and share some things that you've found that help you to be more mindful. And while you're there, click on that subscribe button. Okay, let's wrap this thing up with something really powerful because now that we've talked about the fact that it's not really working and we've turned on our metacognition to think about our thinking, what if we were to next employ this strategy? Let's pick a job that we can actually do. Ooh, that's a novel idea. Let's pick one that we have some control over and enroll ourselves in that job instead. Trying to make everybody happy is not a job that you can do or that you can control. What is one that you can? Let's take the people in your family, for example. Your kids, okay? Your kids, your spouse, the people in the walls of your own home. Is it your job to make them happy? No, that's their job. Your job is to love them no matter what and even if. Can you do that? Ask yourself right now, can I do that? When you realize you can love them no matter what and even if, and sometimes you have to play the even if game, okay? Even if they're in prison, even if they're yelling and screaming at me, yes. Get to yes with whatever even if you can come up with because you don't control those. You're gonna have things just kind of pop up and surprise you. One of the chapters in my book, Pathological Positivity, is titled, Surprise! Meaning, I was expecting life to hand me this or to go this direction and then this happened instead. Surprise! You don't always get to anticipate or expect or know what's going to happen. And so you're going to have surprises. Do the even if game enough to figure out, okay, am I prepared? Can I love them no matter what and even if? When you settle in on a job that you can actually do, it lets you off of the hook because no matter what happens around you, you've got this. You've got this. You can choose to love them no matter what and even if. And that is the job that I would suggest to you when it comes to your family, to your kids, to your spouse. We can expand it to other people outside of your home. They're not quite as important to you as your family. But the concept here is to choose a job that you know that you can do. I recently got to interview uh, Michael Brody Waite. Go look him up. He wrote a book, Great Leaders Live Like Drug Addicts. <laughs> that title is kind of compelling and he knows both sides of that. And he pointed out that we have to surrender the outcomes. I talk about detaching from the outcomes all the time. His word was surrender. 
because you don't control all of the outcomes. And he suggested a little exercise that can help with this. And you can do this as you pick a job that you can do for sure. What he suggested is make a little list of everything about this that you don't control. Okay, put that over here on the left-hand side of the page. Write it all down. Make a list on the other side of the page. Over here on the right-hand side, write down everything that you do control about this. The example that he shared was applying for a job. He had just come out of rehab and he had a big gap in his resume because he'd been in rehab for quite a while, overcoming his drug addiction. Well, he knew that that was going to come up. And he was a little fearful that maybe he's not going to get the job because people are going to see this gap in his resume. They're going to find out and uh, they will never hire me. How are they going to react when they find out that I've been in rehab? I don't control that. Put it over here. Now, what's on this side? He controls when and how he tells them. Oh, there you go. He controls whether he starts a new job under the pretense of a lie or the truth. Put it on that side. He controls how he reacts when they decide whether they're going to hire him or not. See, he's putting all of this on the control side. This is a great exercise to get clear about what you control and what you don't. And then you pick a job that you control because you can do that. And it doesn't matter what's going on around you. This is one way you can get yourself focused on something that you actually have some control over and it's going to change how you feel. You can see that this takes a lot of work and practice. We're not going to leave you hanging. We've got another video ready for you right now about how to take care of yourself, especially as a parent. This is really important. Click on that next video and let's get you powered up.